Good morning and welcome to the short reflection coming from Killin Mance. You'll see from the fact that the candle is already lit that we've got a slightly different order than how we've been doing it in previous times. It's the run up to Christmas so we're going to be reflecting on the Christmas story over the next four weeks. Many people think that the Christmas story is simple and straightforward and most people I think think they know it but in actual fact it's complex, it's profound and it's full of pathos and significance and I want to unpack some of that in these next few weeks. Today we're looking at the whole concept of protest. I've lost count of the number of times people have said to me that they would like to believe and have faith but they have difficulty with it regarding all the problems that there are in the world and indeed in individual lives. But the fact is when we read the Bible it's not full of happy clappy things. It's full of petition, it's full of protest, it's full of longing and anguish. And alongside that is hope and faith. We've got to remember that at the time of the first Christmas, Jesus was born into a world that was difficult. He was born into a country that was occupied and the Jewish people had been living under foreign occupation for a long time. And their cry was, Oh Lord, how long? And that is a theme constant in the Old Testament. It's found in the prophets, it's found in the Psalms, it's found in prayers. And I want to read some words from Psalm 13. How long, O oh Lord? Will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my own thoughts and every day have sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemy triumph over me? Look on me and answer, O Lord. Give light to my eyes or I will sleep in death. But I trust in your steadfast love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord, for he has been good to me. Do these sentiments echo with you? Have you said that prayer? How long, O oh Lord? Have you felt that God has forgotten you? That sometimes his face is hidden from you? That you wrestle with your own thoughts every single day and there's sadness and sorrow in your heart? Then you're not alone. But our faith emerges out of dark days and desperate times. And this sense of protest was there. When was God going to deliver the Jewish people? When was the Messiah going to come? Who was going to light a candle in the darkness? Well at Christmas time we realise there's an answer to that petition and protest and that is Jesus. And today we remember that the candle that is lit behind me is the candle that represents the great affirmation that the light of the world has come. But Christmas was only the beginning. It pointed to Easter. And then the great achievement of Easter points to that glorious day when history has its consummation in the providence and the will of God and the kingdom of God is established fully on earth. So we are a people who are future orientated and the Bible is future orientated. So this Christmas time, 
Remember, a candle was lit in the darkness. And that candle is Jesus. But that is not the full stop at the end of the sentence. The candle is only the beginning of our hope and our faith. The dream is still to be realised. Now, the psalmist in the first couple of verses, it's a petition, it's a plea. There's the problem, there's the things that are, that are difficult. His heart is filled with sorrow, his enemy triumphs over him and he seems to be in despair. But the psalmist doesn't stop there. He continues. But I trust in your steadfast love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord, for he has been good to me. That's typical of the Bible. That there may be a protest and a petition, how long or why is this happening? And then there is resolute faith grounded in resolute the psalmist just keeps on believing, he keeps on praying, he keeps on trusting and indeed he keeps on rejoicing because looking back he knows that God has been faithful in the past and God will be faithful in the future. But these are things that we have to learn. It's not always easy and this Christmas time we're very well aware of the troubles that some people are in, the concerns that they have, and the difficulties that they're facing. And these are not to be ignored. We're in a dark tunnel, but there is light at the end of that tunnel. But sometimes there's a waiting. The people of Israel waited so long for the coming of the Messiah. And we ourselves as Christians wait so long for the coming fully of God's kingdom. But in the meantime, we have the signposts to hope. And today, we remember that. A couple of stories. One I read on the, the internet, I think it was by Nicky Gumbel, and he talked about a woman who had been praying for 37 years for her husband. She herself was a committed Christian, but her husband wasn't interested. And for 37 years, she prayed that her husband would find the faith that she had found. And one day he decided to go to church with her. And lo and behold, he liked it so much, he went back. And eventually he made friends there. And then he discovered the living God. 37 years of prayer, but it worked out in the end. Let me give you another story from my own ex personal experience of knowing someone in a previous church I was at who lost their daughter in tragic circumstances. And she remembers speaking to me after I had delivered a talk at Easter time with the, the little punchline. It's Friday, but Sunday is coming. It's Friday, the darkest day of Holy Week, but Sunday's coming. And she had said to me, it's going to be Friday for a very long time. To cut a long story short, she was involved with the church for many years, came along to all the services, enjoyed Easter, was all the, at all the, the Holy Week services. And years and years passed. And then one year I got a card from her to thank me for the Holy Week services that had just been celebrated. And she said, P.S. I thought you would like to know, but Sunday has come. Sometimes it takes a while. There are no shortcuts, but God's grace is good and his presence is with us and he will get us through to the other side eventually. But like the psalmist, we have to keep praying, trusting, hoping and, in a sense, persevering in faith. And Christmas time reminds us of that. 
that first Christmas the candle was lit, but it was only the beginning. Let's have a short prayer to remember those in a dark place today. Lord, descend to us in the midst of darkness and may the light of your gospel shine in our hearts and grant us your grace. Amen. Thank you for watching and listening. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be yours all the days of this coming week. Amen.